What color is this link? It is blue. And what color is this link? It is also blue. Why? Because you matter, because your privacy matters. We already know that a browser is ready to die for you. I will show you that it's also ready to lie for you. I am your host, Matt Sionkowski, and today we will find out why browsers lie from time to time and why it is a good thing. Have you ever used a website with infinite scroll? You just keep scrolling and scrolling and new posts just pop up out of nowhere. That's the teamwork of few languages, describing everything what should happen in your browser. HTML with CSS for looks and JavaScript for brains. Working together like a dial and the gears. HTML with CSS is responsible for displaying what you see. And JavaScript is responsible for how it changes, when it changes and why it changes. When you scroll to the bottom of the website, it's the code written in JavaScript that will detect it and will make a decision to request for more content. But well, to make that decision, the JavaScript needs to take that information from somewhere. And yes, it is able to probe a lot of properties. For example, using JavaScript, let's ask the browser what is the source of this image. And here we go. Let's ask how many pixels did I already scroll? No problem with that. Let's see what color is that link. Blue. That's correct. And what color is this link? Also blue. And there it is. The rabbit hole. We asked a simple question on the color of the link. And your browser, your window to the world, your best internet buddy, well, light. To show you why it is lying, let's go back to the times where browsers were still truthful. The first mention of the issue was in 2002. It was more popularized in 2006 by this guy, Jeremiah Grossman, who was like, if a web developer controls both HTML and JavaScript, he can, with HTML, render any links he likes, and then, with JavaScript, check their colors one by one and write that information down. This way he can distinguish which links are visited and which are not. In other words, by abusing the styling system, he is able to take a bunch of internet addresses and find out if you visited them in the past or not. And it's not like, I know you visited YouTube. By using some automation, and of course never displaying the links to a real person, it was possible to leak the information on hundreds of thousands of links. You could have just navigated to a simple blog and with this trick the owner could determine what exact videos have you been watching in the past. That is a big leak of browser history. But most importantly, that is a big privacy breach. But let's go further. In 2008, researchers found out that every person has a certain pattern of websites that he or she visits. And of course it depends on multiple factors, but in general 14-year-olds visit different websites than 40-year-olds. Using the link color method and cross-referencing that with browsing patterns, they were able to estimate visitors' gender and age. Even better, some researchers in 2010 found out that they can check your browsing history against social media groups, like Paintball Fans New York or iPhone users. A paintball fan from New York is most probably not located in Europe or Asia. If you were playing the Guess Who game with all people in the world on that board, you just flipped off vast majority of possibilities just with that one group. If you find more interests and start looking into the member lists of the social media groups, you will start finding intersections. Paintball Fans New York may share a few members with Big Brother fans, but the more groups you collect, the closer you get to that one single person. Researchers from Austria stated that by accessing your browser history and looking up the social media groups, they were able to reveal your identity with 42% accuracy. I'm not talking about age or gender anymore. They have 42% 
to guess your name and surname, to identify you. Let me just walk you through it once again, because the way this chain escalates is mind-blowing. From a single fun fact on how the browsers used to work, to absolutely demolishing your privacy. The administrator of a website writes down the code of his website. You visit it. Somewhere outside of your view, the website renders hundreds of thousands of links. Impossible for you to see. So for you, the website acts normally. But what it is actually doing, it's meticulously writing down which of those URLs were already visited by you. The website knows it by checking the style of the link. The website owner ends up knowing your browser history. Not in a full manner, like when you try to view it. You can check your own browser history and it will show you all sites that you visited. A complete, unpolluted list. But what the website owner ends up with is more like a spreadsheet, with all the links that he validated and information if you visited them or not. The more time you spend on his website, the more links he will be able to check. And his spreadsheet will grow larger. He can look up what products have you been shopping for, what videos have you been watching, what social media groups have you accessed. This is painful for your privacy already, but the researchers proved that this information is enough to identify by name and surname 42% of people. The fix came in an interesting way. In 2010 Mozilla patched this and other browsers followed suit. From now on the browser will lie whenever it is asked for the color of a visited link. No matter what the actual color is, the browser will look you in the eye and always provide you the color of a standard, unvisited link. You physically can see the color, but when the website tries to check it, they get a lie. And that lie is in your best interests. The browser here is like your best friend who always got your back. Remember this ad? That is exactly how your browser reacts, like there is nothing like there was nothing ever visited before. Google.com? Never been there. NewYorkTimes.com? Doesn't ring a bell. Browser will even lie about the color of the link that leads to the exact page that you're at right now. It's like saying you've never been to McDonald's inside of McDonald's. The browser is absolutely shameless about it, because it does it for the most important person. You, to protect your privacy. You might be thinking, I just learned some crazy fact about the browsers from before 2010, but it has no use now. Wrong. Remember that we're in the cybersecurity business. It's like in aircrafts. The first guy who dropped a grenade from an airplane changed how the wars are carried. Putting the grenade back in the airplane will not change anything. The Pandora box is opened. Same here. You cannot just find the vector of an attack, patch it and call it a day. This baggage stays with us till the end of time. If you look at OWASP top 10 list, those are the most popular types of vulnerabilities at the moment, you will see that those lists barely change year by year. You can fix, for example, an XSS vulnerability in one web app, but it doesn't mean that it will never be found there again. So, inspired by the whole story of leaking the browser history by style sheets, 20 years after initial discovery and 12 years after it has been patched, I began my quest of hacking the exact same thing. Once again. And it's not like it's some unique accomplishment. Every now and then someone finds a method to recreate this leak. We just want to join the club. I didn't need a color of the link. All I needed was any difference in handling visited and unvisited links, no matter if it's color, size or smoke from the chimney. So I found something out in the following scenario. If I set up a background image for a set of links, and I do that through a mechanism called CSS variables, and the images actually don't work, giving errors. 
you get a certain pattern on how the browser tries to get those images. Yet, it doesn't depend on your browser history. But as soon as you refresh it, the pattern changes into the one that does reveal your browser history. And you know what's the best part? We don't even need to dig deeper to find out why this happens. We can be assuming that it's rooted in browser caching some information for easier access. Just the way you don't go to the coffee machine if you have already been there and you have a mug of coffee cached at your desk. But as said, we don't have to dig that deep. We found our smoke from the chimney. We found our difference. We found our pattern the order of requesting background images. Mission success. We just rendered those links in a frame so we could force a refresh on it and write a simple script that a website owner can run to recognize the pattern in his logs and send it to Mozilla. Mozilla very quickly acknowledged and patched the vulnerability, showing that they put a lot of care into protecting your privacy. This was a second time I submitted a report to Mozilla and once again I was met with highest level of competence and ownership. Good to see, as I am a Firefox user myself. Mozilla even awarded me $4,000 from their bug bounty program. I love bug bounty programs. I don't know who created the first bug bounty program, but he should get a Nobel Prize. It's like the best thing that happened in the security world. I will be making a video about this, but keeping short, bug bounties are a wonder and I highly encourage you to try it. Especially, as you've just seen, you don't need some special software. I scored this one with just a browser. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. But okay, so everything is patched, your browsers are safe. There are no currently known issues with this, so unless someone finds a new vulnerability, we're good, right? Well, not exactly. There is one vector of abusing it that is known, but simply cannot be patched. One that you and me can just sit down and do, and it will work. And you know what? Let's do it. Let's build this. So, let's say our goal is to find out if someone's browser ever displayed the YouTube video of Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up. Let's start by creating a simple website with few random letters on it. Let's mess up with their styling, so they looked weird. Now, let's put a box around them. Does it look familiar? Yes, we are building a captcha. So let's add a text box and a button. Perfect. Now, let's take the first letter, R, and turn it into a link, with the address of our favorite song. Now the link is blue if the browser never visited the link, or purple if it did. But let's change that. Let's remove the underscore and make it white when unvisited, and black when visited. Now the captcha looks like this, and our job is done. Your user will fill in the captcha, but the visibility of the first letter depends on his browser history. He will type this captcha if he didn't see the video, or this one if he did. So, without him knowing, he will actually tell you what the color of the link was. User will leak that information to you. And that is why this cannot be patched. Because browser developers can do a lot, but they cannot patch a living person. This captcha thing is something that is still working. So play with it, yet don't use it for any malicious purposes. As you can see, browsers are some complicated machines and they do their best to protect your privacy, though it's really not an easy task. Sometimes even a very small mechanism, which is potentially harmless, can have serious consequences. I hope you had as much fun as I did creating this video. Before you leave, I would like to ask you for two things. If you find out that any of your friends didn't watch Rick Astley, for the love of God, clue them in. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, click that subscribe button, cause I'm never gonna give you up.